These are the tools that I recommend that you start accumulating for the purposes of woodworking. Starting from right to left, a handsaw. You want to get one that is good for primarily for cross cutting. A good cross cutting, about 24 inch. You could pick this up at your local big box store. This is a Stanley. Moving on, I recommend that you get a tape measure, at least 16 feet. I like the little small ones, but you know, you may need a bigger one also, the, the more robust one for like when you're making measurements at the lumber yard. A folding rule. Folding rule I recommend for checking when you build boxes, like be cabinet or any type of box, anything that's rectangular and you want to check square from corner to corner, this actually works out better than a tape measure. We get into that. A scratch awl. You can use this for severing the grain. You could also use this, and I'll explain that uh, in the future. You could also use this for starting a hole for drilling. A marking knife, similar concept. You could use it for severing the grain across the grain. That's the main purpose for that. Very vital. Combination square. You can use that as a square, first and foremost. You can also use it as a marking gauge. It's adjustable. And with the readouts, you can get exactly one inch scribe or up to a 12 inch scribe. It also has a 45 built in. It's a very common angle that you're gonna use a lot. Now, for the various other angles, this bevel gauge come into play. You can use this to duplicate a bevel, like you have an existing angle that you're trying to match. Along with the bevel angle plate, you can use this to come up with angles. So you want a particular angle, you can set it to that angle and then lock it down and use it in your layout. If you go out to your local office depot, you can find these circle and elliptical templates. They come in handy. For marking, I recommend number two and a half pencils, mechanical pencil, Number five or greater, I usually use a nine, or you can even use a seven. Compass, for again, making circles and curves and so forth. Chalk is excellent for marking and it doesn't damage the board or you don't end up with a situation where you have a permanent mark. I use purple for lighter color woods. I use white for darker color woods. I use an eraser, even though your pencil have an eraser. When you're working on surfaces such as wood, that eraser goes like that. So a dedicated eraser is very useful. Recommended hand tools. I begin with chisels. I recommend that you get a set of bench chisel ranging from a quarter to one inch. That works real well. A block plane, really, really, really handy block plane. You can use it for beveling the edge, knocking off a sharp edge, rounding the edge, tuning a joint. Very handy. I'm also going to recommend a number three hand plane. Number three hand plane is good for getting rid of machine marks. It's good for even milling if you don't have a jointer or a planer. We'll get into that. Now, with your hand tools, you're gonna to need a means of sharpening them. I highly recommend these diamond plates. They usually come in a coarse, medium, and fine, or super fine. We will be talking about that in the future. 
I have this little metal rule. It comes into play when you're sharpening the plane blade. Diamond plates, not only used for sharpening the blades, but also initial prep and flattening the back of the chisel and the plane blade. We'll get into that. Now, in the process of doing that, you're gonna need some type of fluid to transport the debris that you create when you're abrading the metal. Some people use oil, some people use water. I do not like water around my tools and oil can get kind of messy. I like using window cleaner, it works. You can get it very cheap. You don't need a special brand. It, you don't have a problem with it rusting your tools. It works, it even works well when we get into power tools, cleaning your saw blades and so forth. For the abatement of rust, rust is always an issue when you have metal tools. I use oil on all my um, metal surfaces, even on my power tools on their surfaces. You're gonna need an assortment of flat and Phillips head screwdrivers. You're gonna need it for your planes. You're gonna need it in other situations. You, you wanna get that. As far as hammer, 16 to 20 ounce claw hammer, beautiful. Good for driving nails and so forth. If you don't have a pneumatic nailer, you may start off using finished nails, that works. You're also gonna need nail set. Usually they come in a set of three from a very small to a large, larger one, depending on the size nails that you're using. Dead blow hammer. A dead blow hammer is used when you're working on your project and you're trying to assemble and put it together. And sometimes you have to coerce it into place and you don't wanna hit it with a metal object and damage the lumber, so you're gonna use a dead blow hammer. Moving on, sanding blocks. These particular ones, I mean, you don't really need sand blocks. You can use a block of wood and I'll show you that too. You can use my favorite sticky back sandpaper on a block of wood and you accomplish the same thing. These particular ones are very handy. In the future, when I review them, I'll show you all the features of it. But these are very handy. They use the belts that you use for belt sanders. That leads me back to the sticky back sandpaper. I like to use sticky back sandpaper, not only for sanding, but I also use it in hand tool preparation. You put it on a flat surface that like your joiner or your table saw or even a piece of MDF or glass, and you can use it for flattening tools. You can almost use it in place of these. I still prefer the stones, but you still have that as an option. Always, always recommend that you have a first aid kit in the shop Injuries do occur, we don't want them to occur. Usually if you follow and the rules and you respect the tools, usually they're minor, it's just a matter of a band-aid, but you wanna have a first aid kit. When you're handling pieces of stock, you do have your occasional splinter. If you wanna avoid that, especially rough wood, I recommend gloves. Do not use the gloves when you're operating power tools. That's a... A uh, no-no, I want to use another word, but that's a no-no. That can be very dangerous. A power tool could grab this and pull your hand into it. But I use these when I'm handling raw material. Safety glasses. Y'all know how I feel about that if you watch my table saw safety course. Same thing with the hair and protection, and same thing for protecting your lungs. My preference is a respirator, depending on what you're doing. If you're not set up with a vacuum system, this becomes even more crucial. At minimum, N95 dust mass. Paste wax is very cheap. You don't have to buy any fancy wax. The Johnson paste wax you find in the grocery store. You can use that for lubricating your handsaw to make the cuts easier. I use it on this work surface. I also use it on my bench as a finish. I don't generally push inexpensive tools unless I come across one that actually impress me. In most cases, most cases, you get what you pay for, especially with power tools. We'll get into that. Some of these inexpensive power tools, in my opinion, is not just cheap in a sense that you can waste your money on it. Buying something multiple times don't save you money, one. 
but some of them, in my opinion, is outright dangerous. I don't even know how they legally sell them, but that's a topic for another day. But these cheap clamps, I like them for beginners. Main reason being, it's going to teach you a, a very vital lesson when it comes to a glue up. If your bores are not prepped properly and you think you're going to force it together using a set of Bessie clamp that has the ability, has a torque to pull it together if you're not perfect. And your, your project may look good in the beginning. You may be happy with it in the beginning until it tears itself apart. Because the only thing keeping it together is that thin film of glue that is under pressure because those two boards are fighting to be apart. If you can't clamp it together with this, that's mean the boards are not fitted properly. So I, I like these to begin with. I recommend that you get four 48 inch and to start and four 24 inch. And we're gonna, this is a little bit of a hack. I put a strip of wood in there to make it a little bit more rigid in both of them, but we, we'll be going over that. Also use carpet tape or what you call double side stick tape. Use this when you're using jigs when we get into power tools, but I brought this up here. It acts like a clamp. It stick to two different surfaces at the same time. Very useful. These little quick clamps also very useful. I recommend that you get at least a pair. I buy glue by the gallon. Rather than toting around a gallon of glue, I got a glue bot. This is a very useful tool. I can fill this with glue and I use this projects in my glue up. I highly recommend these silicone glue, glue brush tips and spreaders. The cool thing about this is after the glue dries, it just peels right off. So these are very useful. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Well, this represent an excellent starting point. In another video, I will get into the power tools that I recommend and the order that I think that you should get them in. I want you to understand, I'm not gonna be necessarily pushing you toward expensive tools. Any tools that I recommend to you is gonna be because I think it's gonna provide great value. Most of the stuff on here does not represent top of the line, but it do represent great value. These two items, probably wondering what they are. These are winding sticks. This is a commercially bought one and this is a homemade one. And I will demonstrate this for you in the future. What this does, it allows you to check twists in a, in a board. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to be notified when new content is dropped on this channel, like, subscribe, Hit the bell notification and drop a comment down below.